All right, guys, so this is our final uh, final part of the key. Um, so just like the other ones, uh, I, have to, I, I feel my voice even getting weaker right now. Um, so I'm going to kind of do maybe one of these, maybe two of these on video, and then I'll just provide the rest via key, okay? Um, and it also looks like there's a couple mistakes here, which I'll go over. Uh, the first one is that uh, it doesn't actually say what this is supposed to be. Um, so let's, let's get a correction here. Um, we have to prove A, B, C, D is an isosceles trapezoid okay that just wasn't written and it should have been that's my fault okay so I spotted that mistake I also spotted this one um, so we have to we have to show here that this is not a rectangle um, but a square and you can probably guess that was coming uh, so text box square okay so prove that's a square all right now the reason we're gonna do a couple of these um, for, is for a couple different reasons. One is my voice, but honestly, these are all kind of the same problem. Um, the only thing that really changes is um, what you have to calculate based on the definition and then kind of the numbers and the calculation itself. The rhythm here is all very much the same. It's so like, for example, on this one, if we have to prove or disprove that ABCD is an isosceles trapezoid, um, we first have to identify what in the world is it that makes an isosceles trapezoid special. Well, it's actually two things. One, trapezoid, meaning that we have one set of parallel sides, probably BC and AD, um, but also the isosceles part, meaning we, the other two side lengths have to be the same. Now, this does say prove or disprove, which means we, in the end, we may not find uh, the qualities that require an isosceles trapezoid um, but we have to proceed with the assumption that we are going to be able to prove this true okay so first things first and by far the most important thing is we have to write a good analysis now on the analysis we have to include three different things what we intend to, what we have to show to show an isosceles trapezoid um, how we're going to accomplish that task what techniques are we going to use and then what we actually expect to see in our calculations okay and so we have to start with the definition so first part Um, so you can also tell my board is kind of messing up on my writing. I'll try to do my best to clean that up in the key. I might actually go back and type it or something. Uh, but to prove ABCD is an isosceles trapezoid, I must show it has one set of parallel sides and one set of congruent sides. Okay, so now let's talk about how we're going to show parallel, how we're going to show congruent. Okay, and here's where we can be a little bit more specific. I believe the parallel sides are going to be BC and AD. So to show that BC parallel to AD. Um, and I can calculate rise over run either by counting with slope triangles, or of course I can use um, the slope formula. Um, I believe the perpendicular sides are going to be AB and CD. Okay, now that's a length calculation. Okay. 
okay? Now, I could use a distance formula as well, um, but I like the Pythagorean theorem, therefore I'm gonna use it. Okay, now we need to wrap this up by making an affirmative statement of what we expect to see. Okay, so it's usually framed as an if then. Okay, so if BC is parallel to AD, okay, and AB is congruent to CD, okay, uh, then I met the conditions that I laid out. I have one set of parallel sides, one set of congruent sides. Okay, uh, so ABCD So if I show and actually I can actually see these, um, meaning the slopes have to be the same and the sides have to be the same length, um, then ABCD is an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, so in the calculations, I just have to do what I said I was going to do. Um, so let's start with the slope calculations, right? And so let's, uh, I'm gonna use rise over run, which means I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm dropping six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At the same time, I'm running eight. Okay, so and again, this is probably important we say very, very organized. Okay, so the slope of AD okay, is gonna be negative six over eight, which when reduced um, by half, negative three over four. Okay, so we should compare that with the slope of BC. So we have a, a minus three run and then a four. Well, that's gonna match up perfectly, um, but we should still record it. Okay, so we know that parallel means same slope, and we showed the same slope, so we're halfway there. We just now have to show distances. Okay, now we said we're gonna use Pythagorean theorem for the distance, or at least I did. Okay, so let's, let's show that. Okay, um, so let's draw up our triangles here. That's one, one, two, three, four. Okay, so um, if I wanna find the distance between A, B, Okay, that's gonna be a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. <sighs> okay, all right. All right, um, so we have one and four, so that's one squared plus four squared is equal to c squared. So C is gonna be equal to the square root of 17. Okay, which is approximately equal to 4.123. All right, now we do have to compare that to our final distance. Uh, which is CD, but CD is a vertical line, and so we don't even really have to do any calculations. We can simply count this. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Okay, um, so we have CD equals four. Well, here, here's a problem. There def it's definitely a trapezoid. We know that because we have same slopes. Okay, so we have same slopes here. Okay, uh, but it doesn't look like it's gonna be isosceles because we don't have the same distance. 
Okay, and that's okay because um, we said we had to prove or disprove it, and it seems like this one's actually something we're going to disprove. Right? And so our conclusion is ABCD is not Because AB is not congruent to CD. In other words, it violates one of the conditions that we set. And so the whole point of proof is laying out your argument, showing through calculations in this case that your argument holds up or doesn't hold up, and then drawing a conclusion based on your work. And so to review, an isosceles trapezoid must have one set of parallel sides and one set of congruent sides. Um, parallelism, we're calculating slope. Congruency, we're calculating Pythagorean theorem for distance. Um, if we have parallel and congruent sides um, separately, one pair of parallel, one pair of congruent, then it's isosceles trapezoid. Um, so we calculated the slope, and they're the same. So it's definitely a trapezoid. But when we calculated the distances, those were not the same. And so we can conclude that it's a trapezoid, but not an isosceles one, all right? Um, and that's really the case for all of these. Like if we want to prove this is a square, well, we have to prove we have all 90 degree angles. And we have to prove that we also have uh, all congruent sides. If we want to prove it's a rectangle, we just have to prove 90 degree angles and that's it. Um, if we want to prove it's a parallelogram, we have to prove we have two sets of opposite parallel sides. And if we want to prove it's a kite, we have to prove that two sides are congruent and another two set of sides are congruent. Um, in a trapezoid, well, we just did that one, one set of parallel sides, okay? Uh, in a rhombus, all four sides the same. So uh, while I'll go through that uh, in the key, I'm not going to make videos for all that because it's a little bit repetitious in terms of what to do. Um, but certainly that's the rhythm you should see, establishing what we have to do, how we're going to do it, actually showing that in calculation and then um, drawing a conclusion based on our work, right? Um, so that's proofs. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to contact your teacher uh, or if I'm your teacher, contact me um, and we'll be happy to answer some questions on Monday. Thank you.